All right, what's going on everybody? I just wanna make a real quick video to highlight something that's in one of my old blog posts. I believe I wrote this in 2015, early 2015, so it's almost four years old. Wow, time flies. But anyway, in that time, I have not seen this interpretation of Quetzalcoatl get out there really and maybe that's because I'm completely full of it I don't know that's possible but in the event that there's actually something to it I just wanted to highlight it real quick this is from Manly P. Hall the secret destiny of America referring to Quetzalcoatl according to their own legends the Mayas owed their cultural superiority to a mysterious old man who came out of the sea riding on a raft of serpents among various tribes, this man has different names, but he is best known by the title conferred upon him in the Mexican area. Here he was called Quetzalcoatl. He is said to have come from the east, from the land of the many colored rocks. Quetzalcoatl carried with him the symbol of the cross. His name means the feathered snake or the serpent covered with the plumes of the Quetzal bird. Now, when you actually go break down the word Quetzalcoatl, First, there's Coatl, which is a Nahuatl word meaning serpent or twin. It is one of the day signs in the Aztec calendar. And then you go to Quetzal, which is a kind of bird that is common to this region. And when you put them together, you can see that the Quetzal bird bears a very striking resemblance to the actual Phoenician uh, ships. You can see here this is the boat oars as it were and then this is sort of the plumed serpent head of the boat, right? And it's interesting because Coatl means serpent or twin and so you have the twin boat oars and then you also have the serpent aspect of the boat which then also looks like the quetzal bird so it would seem like quetzalcoatl is actually a cipher that is literally referring to the phoenician boats which as manly hall recounts is essentially the antediluvian bloodline that seeded civilization across the world. And obviously they would have done this uh, by sea because this was the only mode of transportation at the time. And it's so interesting when you trace this power that resided on the sea and was colonizing all of what we perceive to be ancient indigenous cultures like the Aztecs and the Mayans. Well, if you go by Manly Hall's interpretation of the history, he goes on to say that the feathered snake taught the people of Central America all of the useful arts and raised them from a primitive state to one of an excellent civilization. Now, of course, Manly Hall is a mouthpiece, honorary 33rd degree Mason of the power structure. So, of course, he's going to refer to the actions of these colonizers in a reverential way. Anyway, he instructed them in agriculture, architecture, medicine, science, language, religion, and statesmanship. Having accomplished the civilization of the Indian tribes, he ruled over them for a time as a benevolent priest king. Then he returned to the shore of the sea, called to his raft of serpents, and then floated away to the east with the promise to return at a distant day to rule over his nation. And you can see, if you take this literally as these Phoenician ships that were colonizing all of these lands well before what they tell us is the start of this, which was Christopher Columbus and the Spanish, of course. But if you take it literally, then it's actually referring to an intelligence that was seeding civilization well before official history indicates. So I just wanted to bring that up real quick because when you do a search for Quetzalcoatl on YouTube, I mean, there's nothing along the lines that I laid out in the blog post. And again, that could be because it's completely ridiculous and not accurate in any way. But 
I think there's a lot to be said, especially when you go through everything that's in that blog post about the idea that there was this intelligent power of the sea that seeded, reseeded really civilization. And you can trace it all the way through to the British Empire, which of course was an empire of the sea. And it's sort of like a shell game throughout history where they've relabeled themselves as different things. So it seems like uh, history is coincidental and haphazard, when in reality it's been a unified bloodline, a unified intelligence that has been orchestrating everything from the beginning. Or at least if we take the Great Flood seriously, or whatever cataclysm it may or may not have been, if we take that seriously, then this is the group that has been reseeding civilization since that time. But yeah, there's really nothing along these lines on YouTube. So I just want to throw a video up here real quick and point that out just in case anybody is interested in these topics and does a search and then they will come across it. Or at least that's how YouTube was designed. I don't know if it's still like that anymore, <laughs> the way things are going. Um, so there's all sorts of esoteric and metaphysical interpretations of Quetzalcoatl and what it represents. And obviously as... I'm not a part of that culture. I can't speak knowledgeably about how it is interpreted through their own oral tradition, especially amongst those who have a strong connection to their indigenous wisdom. But just looking objectively at the limited amount of information that we are able to acquire, I think there is a possibility that Quetzalcoatl is actually a cipher for the feathered serpent, which literally translates into the Phoenician boats, the feathered serpent, right? Coatl twins, the twin boat oars, one on each side, the serpent, Coatl, and then the Quetzal bird also reinforces the same imagery. But that's all I got for now. I'll leave it there. You guys have a good one. Peace.